Hey everybody, welcome back to Pizza Legends. We're getting back to the overworld part of the game today. Specifically, we're gonna make a new component called the HUD that's gonna sit on the top of the screen and show us the state of each one of our lineup pizzas. The starting code is below. If you missed anything, be sure to like and sub to follow along with the whole series. Let's get started. So we're focusing on one new component today. That's gonna to be the overworld HUD. Let's go ahead and get that component on screen. So I'm gonna open up the overworld.js file and then at the init method here, right before we start the map, let's go ahead and create our new component and add it on the screen. So I'll say this.hud is gonna be a new HUD. And this is a new class that we're gonna create. And then we'll inject it into the DOM. So we'll run its init method that it will have passing in a container that we wanna inject it to. And so for us, that's gonna be our game container where everything else is. Now let's get this on the page. So I'll go to index.html. We're gonna need some styles for sure. And so up here, I'll make another one of these files and we're gonna call it hud.css. Doesn't exist yet, but we'll create it in a second. And we're gonna do a similar thing for our script file where the component will live. We can go ahead and create these files for real now. So starting with hud.js. And then in our styles, right click on this one, say hud.css. We'll come back to this one in a minute. Let's go back to the JS file. So let's start our usual class code. It's gonna be a class HUD, it's gonna have a constructor. It's gonna have one of these create element methods. We're gonna have a way to update the element when it's on the screen, like after a battle when we need to update the HP values and all that, or if you use a recovery item. And then our init method that uses that container there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can read it better. Now let's kick off our usual stuff. So we'll run that create element method. And then when we have an element created, we can append child to that container. And you know, we've seen all this stuff before. Now when creating our element, we can do our usual create a new div, and then we'll give it a class name that matches our JavaScript class name exactly. This is what we'll use to style in a second also. And now for each pizza in our lineup, we wanna go ahead and add one of those scoreboard combatant components to the screen. And that's gonna live within our container element here, the HUD element. So let's grab player state by doing some destructuring on the window. Player state has that array called lineup on it. So we'll iterate through that. That's gonna be each ID of our pizzas. We can grab the pizza now by using that key. And now in this project, we've already created a component that we can pretty much reuse exactly. And if I open up combatant.js, we'll see that. Remember this thing? It's got life bars, XP bars on it. It's got a little image of the pizza, the type. We're gonna go ahead and use that and then sort of customize it for our HUD use case here. So back in HUD.js, I'm gonna say scoreboard is a new combatant. Passing in some configuration, we're gonna start with the ID and that'll be our key. This is gonna help us know which scoreboard to update when updates do come in. And now we're gonna configure this pretty much just like we did in battle. So let's look at that again. In battle.js, we have this method called add combatant. And remember, we spread in first the base pizza and then our state overrides and then some extra battle stuff that we won't need in this case. So back in HUD, spread in our pizza. Each pizza has that pizza ID on it that refers back to the ID of the pizza decks. And then all of the values in the pizza itself. So this will give us our HP, XP, etc. The second argument of new combatant here wants a reference to the battle that we're in, but of course we're not in a battle. So we'll just pass null there. And we may need to update our combatant class to be okay with not having a battle. And that's totally cool. We'll do that in a second. Now we can run scoreboards version of create element That'll create the actual individual element for each pizza. And now our HUD container class here wants to keep a reference to each of the scoreboards that it's creating. So it starts up, we maybe have three pizzas in the lineup, it's gonna create three of these. Now as updates come in, like if we use a recovery item or we finish a battle and our HP is different now, we need to have some kind of reference to the scoreboard so we can fire one of those updates on it. So this component is actually gonna keep a list of scoreboards and it can start empty. And then as we create scoreboards here, we'll go ahead and push to that list. And so when we run update, we can iterate through each scoreboard and update it. 
Now we're gonna actually add the DOM elements of each scoreboard into our parent HUD container here. If you remember, the combatant component creates a HUD element and a pizza element for each combatant that it's dealing with, but we're only gonna need this HUD element here. So after we've pushed into the scoreboards list here, we can go ahead and just update the DOM part. So this, the HUD element can receive a child and that's gonna be scoreboard.hud element. So this code's gonna get all of our lineup elements on screen. Now we need to actually fill them with their current values. And so after we create them, we'll go ahead and run one of these, this.updates. And in the future, when we talk about things like the pause menu and updating the lineup altogether, we'll probably make a more intrusive edit where we rip out these DOM elements and rerun this create element method to get a fresh set of scoreboards. But we'll cover that when we add that feature in another video. Now, I think we're about ready to see this on screen, but let's fix this goof here. Um, container here, we, we want to append the child this dot element. Sorry, it's really early here, so still waking up. So when I boot up the game, I can see that the component is rendering to the screen, and that's a good first step. But obviously, the appearance doesn't look quite right. It's way down here, and there's some layering issues going on. So let's go ahead and edit the styles for this component in context of the overworld. Let's bring in some styles for HUD. So in HUD.CSS, first we're going to make the entire container position absolute. And this is what's containing our individual scoreboards. That's going to hug the top left part of the screen. And then we want to make sure anything inside that gets that image rendering pixelated treatment so it's nice and crisp. By default, our combatant component wanted to be position absolute to take up a really specific place in the battle scene. But here, we don't really want that. We just want them to stack. So we'll go ahead and make sure that each one is position relative and then give it some margin bottom so that it kind of pushes the next one on the list down, giving it some nice spacing. And then finally, in this context, we don't want to display the type icon. This is what we wanted to see in battle. Instead, we want to show that pizza avatar. And if you remember, we kind of set this up in the battle video when we initially created the combatant component. With those CSS changes in place, we can see that the scoreboards are hugging the part of the screen where we want. They're still blank, but that's okay. They're spaced out nice. And when I walk around, they kind of hug and stay right up there. Now back in HUD.js, we can fill in the code that updates the scoreboards to actually fill in those life bars and such. And really all we need to do is look up the stateful values from the pizza in player state and then run them through the scoreboard update method. Remember the combatant update method looks like this. It's ready to receive an object full of changes and it'll kind of spread those changes into the appearance of the, the life bars and such. So here we're gonna run scoreboard.update we're going to look up the window.player state in the pizzas object, the pizza with this ID, which is going to be s.id. Remember, we're tacking that on here when creating the scoreboard. This bit here will look up the current state of this pizza and then pipe it through that update method. We should see the life bars update. And now when I run the game, it actually crashes because we still have a little bit more work to do in making sure that the combatant component is okay with not having a battle reference. It's making an assumption that we're in a battle right now, but we're not, and so we need to just update the component a little bit more to be okay with that. So in combatant.js, let's go ahead and just take a look at anywhere that this.battle is used. Looks like it's only in two places. One, where of course we set the battle from the constructor, and then in the isActive method, it's looking up the active combatants on the list, and that's the error that we saw in the console there. So using optional chaining, we can just throw a question mark here. And now if battle, isn't present, the code will just stop here, is active will be not true, but that's okay, we don't really care about active or not in the context of the HUD, and we'll see what this does. And now when I run the game, you can see that these are appearing fine, the values are filled in correctly, it looks just like the battle. Now all we need to do is wire up some kind of update signal so that other events in the game can trigger these bars to update if the values have changed. Now back in the code, I'm gonna clean up the screen a little bit here. Let's go back to HUD.js and look at this init method. Now it's possible that any other component on the screen could go ahead and look up the HUD and call update on it whenever we want those values to you know, update to show the latest info of the player state. But instead, we're gonna take a slightly different approach that's similar to what we've seen in the overworld before where this component is just gonna be listening for a signal and that signal is gonna look basically just like a regular browser event. We can name it whatever we want, uh, player state updated. And anytime it hears or sees this signal happen, it's gonna go ahead and do whatever we need it to do. 
And so for us right now, that's this dot update. The idea here is that anytime player state changes, we can go ahead and fire off this signal. HUD will see it and recognize it and then run its update method. Again, that way we don't have to like find the HUD element and, and manually call this dot update on it. Anytime anybody fires the signal, it'll just do it. Now, currently the only place that we're updating player state is after a battle's complete, and that's in battle.js, whenever we receive a winner here on winner. And here our code is updating the player state pizza. And so these values are updated. Now we just need to fire off one of those signals to ask anything that is listening for that to, to update. So say send signal to update. And a while back, we created a utility for this exact thing, and we've used it a few times. It's called emit event. So here we can say utils.emit event, passing in that same string. And now whenever this code runs, we'll go ahead and fire off the emitter. The HUD will see it and then update the values. So when we come out of a battle, we should see the updated HUD. So in the future, if we're working on recovery items or anything like that that might affect player state, whenever we're done making those edits to the values, if we just fire this off, then the HUD will reflect the new value. Okay, it's time to see this in action. Take note that Slice Samurai, our first pizza, is on level one and has this much XP, almost, almost to the next level there, but not quite. I'll start this battle. Remember, this battle is currently configured to start pretty much almost over, so it'll be easy for us to just finish it really quick. I'll use WAMP. I've won the battle. My player state will update. When I go back to the overworld after gaining this XP, see if we have our new level, new XP. That signal has fired, and now the HUD has updated. So this component is correctly showing the current state of our player. Now you can just play the game as normal, and this thing will continue to update. So in the next video, we're going to start focusing on our pause menu so that we can, of course, pause the action and make any edits to our pizza lineup. As always, if you're liking the series, please hit the like button and subscribe for the whole thing. Remember that if you're working on a game, you should come join our Discord channel. We got a whole group of indie developers that would love to hear about your project. So hop in there, tell us about it. We'd love to see you there. There's a Ko-fi donation link below if you'd like to support the channel directly. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.